Hey there, welcome to the channel. Hope you're doing well. You know, for original content, you can always see ValhallaOutfitter.com and our store is now open at shop.ValhallaOutfitter.com. We appreciate your support and any chance uh, we have to earn your business. Got a box in the mail today. I'm super excited about this. I've been um, putting together a lightweight rig for long hikes, backcountry action, um, in a 6.5 PRC, and I'm thinking about an optic to go on there. Just like so many things in life, everything is a compromise when it comes to optics. Normally, if I keep my optic around 30 ounces, I'm fairly pleased with that and I can live with it. But lately, I've been working more with lightweight, uh, thinking in terms of lightweight. Uh, and to achieve that, to date, I have purchased the Leupold VX5 HD. I thought that that might go on this Browning x -Bolt Pro. It currently lives on my uh, Benelli Lupo, which is about a pound heavier, uh, the firearm itself is about a pound heavier than that Browning. This is a very interesting option. Vortex Razor LHT. I imagine the L, I imagine it's for light hunting tactical. I'm always on the hunt for optics that can do more than one thing. I like firearms that can do more than one thing. And it's you can't really always find it. Um, if you want a heavy gun for target shooting, that is, then you're not worried about weight and you can put a three pound optic on top of it. And it has all the bells and whistles you need for tactical shooting. If you want a lightweight back country rig, um, you're gonna have to make some sacrifices. This LHT I think is Razor's or Vortex's attempt to bridge that gap between weight and features and balance it in a way that this optic allows you to kind of have it pull double duty. For me, I'm thinking in terms of long range hunting. This goes from four and a half to 22. They do make a model that may be three to 15. My loop hold is three to 18. The other loop holds are such that they're five times uh, erector system, or pardon me, five times zoom system, optical system, means if you want to go to 20, you start at 4 and go 4 to 20. This is slightly larger in that it gets you up to 22, but I think still has a, a low enough low end magnification to make it useful for hunting. Generally, I'd like to be able to go down to 3, but again, we're talking about making compromises. The other component is once you start getting into nice gear, and th these aren't the highest end by any means. You can get into Zeiss, Steiner. Uh, there's all manner of brands that will dwarf the price tag of, of this or some of those loopholes. But you begin to have some choices and be, be able to be real picky about your reticle. I like generally a clean, uncluttered reticle. And when I hunt, I often use a duplex. Um, however, the VX5 HD, when I look at the reticle, if I get the fire dot... I cannot get it that also has the reticle that has windage dope. I generally would like to dial for elevation and hold for wind, but to hold for wind, you need to be able to know exactly where you're holding. However, in most practical hunting applications, you could just hold off a hair and probably be okay. So this razor, while I intend on using it for hunting, it does have a more... Um, tactical style reticle, which is a little bit busier than I would usually choose for that application. However, if it also lets me use it for tactical applications or plink and steal at long range with my buddies, then maybe it's worth it. You get a super nice box. Um, they give you a free custom ballistic strip. This is kind of instead of the CDS, the custom ballistic strip tapes around the elevation and they print it out to match the dope for your round and then you um, can just dial to the number. Uh, let's see, looks like you get a polishing cloth. Here's a battery and a ring that I'm not sure what that's for. It says for um, to properly mount it, don't exceed 18 pounds on the screws. You're gonna want a torque wrench when you do this stuff. 
You also get the reticle uh, description and what looks like the owner manual in here in a nice fashion. You do also get um, a sunshade. The optic itself comes in at 23 ounces and it feels light. My 3 to 15, I think it is, 3 to 18, 3 to 15, the VX5 HD is a 19 ounce scope. This doesn't, this is slightly heavier, obviously, by 4 ounces, but it's well underneath kind of that 30 ounce, um, what that was kind of my guideline. I will mention that when I, I, I'm a big fan of Miopka, I think you get a lot of bang for your buck, uh, but they're a little heavy, like 31, 32 ounces. When I had the Miopta uh, on top of that Benelli, and that was a seven pound gun, so it weighed a full extra pound over the uh, X-Bolt Pro. When I took that Miopta off and I put the Razor or the uh, VX5 HD onto it, it felt, not only was it lighter um, by roughly a, almost a pound, what's important or what I found to be important is that the fact that that weight is coming off the top of the rifle. So if you have a fairly low weight rifle and you put three pounds on it, it starts to make it feel like it's maybe a little bit top heavy. And by shaving that full pound off the top, not only uh, did it make the, the gun lighter, but it actually kind of changed the characteristic of how it feels. Uh, so for these lighter builds, I'm really kind of becoming a weight weenie. Um, and, and, you know, there's a reason for that. I don't want to carry heavy stuff anymore. This scope has capped windage, which is fine for me because, once again, I typically would rather hold. The covers are nice, aluminum, Vortex, un lifetime guarantee, no questions asked, goes back on there. One nice thing about this, whereas the VX5 HD has that CDS where you push the silver button to uh, unlock the turret and spin it, and then when you spin it back, it automatically clicks into place. This one is the more... Um, kind of industry standard lift to unlock dial I like it feels good and lock it down if there's a tiny bit of mush in there that's only a product of the lifting um, the way that those locking lifting uh, turrets work it's impossible not to have a little bit of that I don't know if the diopter on this locks or not all right, after a quick consultation on the phone, I figured it out. Uh, I'm going to zoom that camera in here and get you up on the table so you can see. I just took it outside to adjust the diopter. Um, the reticle is crisp and clear. You can use it at low magnifications. Um, once you get up to about nine, you can maybe ish, nine ish, you can really start to use the um, tactical reticle that is in there. It's not overly busy, but it does give you the information that you need. On When you're way up though at 20, you've got about a uh, half an inch window for your eye to be in the right spot to, to get the full field of view of the scope. So when you're mounting this thing, you're gonna have to make sure you've got it right where you want it if you plan on spending much time at higher magnifications. Let me um, bring that camera in here and uh, get you a closer look at, um, at what this thing is all about. Okay, so here it is up close. Um, there on this side you have your parallax. There's the switch. It simply pushes the battery up against the actuator and you click it to turn it on, click it to roll through the settings then the parallax is located right next to there, as you would expect. That parallax knob is really the Dickens to turn. Hopefully it'll break in a little bit over time. Over here is your mag ring. The mag ring does have this tiny little nib, which is good and bad. It means it's kind of like an included throw lever, but it also means that Vortex's switch view lever will not work on this. However, MK Machining does make one that you can put on that has a little notch. I already have one downstairs. We'll put it on here and show you what it looks like. The reason I was having trouble with the diopter setting is because it's not all the way here at the where the IP starts. You actually adjust the diopter here. Here is the locking ring. 
I could not muscle that locking ring off. However, a quick call to Vortex, you turn the whole eyepiece, which will then put enough force on that locking ring to back it off. You spin it free, adjust your diopter where you want it, and then you lock the locking ring back down. You notice the eyepiece on this is pretty svelte. Even the curvature, the bubble of it, kind of reminds me of the VX5s. Um, it's a little more pleasing than some of their more oversized options, the oversized mag ring. And again, I'm sure all of that is designed to save weight because you're saving 10 ounces, they have to do it somewhere. Again, to adjust your elevation, click it up, spin it, and click it back down when you are back on zero. Um, the elevation knob is pretty easy to spin, uh, and I noticed that my old PST Gen 2 5 to 25 was also pretty easy to spin. I didn't really like that because it didn't lock. So this kind of allows you to spin quickly uh, without overshooting and um, locks in place so that you won't bump it and move it inadvertently or accidentally. Again, here is the um, capped windage, and then you have a 50 mil tube. We'll put this side by side with a couple other scopes just so you can get a, a feel for how big this is in relation to some of the other options out there. Um, I think it's, I don't know, about 13 inches long, uh, and there are scopes that are considerably bigger, but it just feels like it's kind of compact, and I wonder if that compact nature of it is part of the reason that the eye relief at high magnifications is a little touchy. Um, I'm going to do some work, put this through its paces so we can get a better handle on if it's going to work or not. As far as the low weight options, option goes, it is certainly a very nice scope with a very usable reticle that makes sense for the crossover application. And again, in this low weight category, I was having trouble finding a scope that had all the same features, that had a reticle that I could hold for wind that also was illuminated because those fire dots just weren't giving me what I needed in that regard. And it also has a very sensible magnification range. I think it's four and a half up to 22. Still would allow me to hunt at you know 150 to 100 yards. You would not use this on a gun that is meant for brush busting where an animal could jump out at 20 yards and you need to get a quick shot off because the field of view at four and a half just isn't enough to allow you to do that comfortably but I have other guns for that. That's really not what this is designed for. Anything at 50 yards plus, you're gonna be able to have a low enough magnification that you'll have no trouble watching animals, identifying animals, and it still gives you the ability to dial up, identify targets at long range, and then gives you enough room in the magnification range to let you shoot where you want. As far as a crossover, more than one purpose type of scope, I think they checked a lot of boxes that make a lot of sense. Again. I don't mind the push button illumination. I kind of like it. It has the features I need. It's set up the way I like with the, the locking uh, elevation turret that is exposed and with the capped windage. That's how I prefer my, my hunting setups are. The reticle is a good compromise between a purely tactical setup and a hunting setup. Um, we'll throw a battery in, get the illumination going, and I'll try to get this set up somewhere where maybe I can get a few shots through the reticle. But first impressions, super well made, high quality. It's got their forever, no questions asked warranty. The balance is a little rearward, I think, just based on where the er erector is. Um, that 50 mil lens doesn't quite um, balance it out. But again, it's only 23 ounces, and I think uh, if you're thinking about a good crossover multi-purpose scope in a lower weight range that has a low weight to feature to high feature ratio it's going to be you're going to be hard pressed to, to do better than this these things i think originally msrp is about two grand i think on the street they're closer to 14 or 1500 bucks you might get one a little bit cheaper on sale so they're not inexpensive but they're not top tier they certainly are entering the fray of the top tier type of glass. So, you know, top of the middle tier or kind of low of the top tier maybe is how you want to think about this. Um, trim, svelte, feels good in the hand, nice to look through. I'll get a little bit more time behind it and give you some additional thoughts after we've played with it um, to an extent that we can make a more informed opinion of it. But so far, early indications are it's good. It's going to do what I hope. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you tuning in. We'll see you later. Bye.